I'm this generation's Don Imus. <laughs> Folks, this is the Robozoid once again. Well, if the last video was positive news, possibly, about George Lucas buying back Star Wars and Lucasfilm and Indiana Jones and all of its other intellectual properties from Disney, well, <clears throat> this one has a bit of a somber note to it. The reason why? Well, it has to do with this new series that's being made called Star Wars Acolyte. Yeah, I never heard of it either. But apparently it's being done by this chick by the name of Leslie Hedlund. Don't remember her? A few years ago, Kathleen Kennedy hired this little dyke to, well, write an all-female-centric Star Wars show that had absolutely no wars or fighting in it at all. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the whole point of Star Wars. Star Wars. There's war going up on in space. I mean, what are you going to call this damn thing, Star Peace? You're a moron, okay, Lezo Hedlund? A complete moron. And as for you, Kathleen Kennedy, you're just a dullard who keeps screwing up and never learning from her mistakes. And then we have to talk about this acolyte business, which I don't even know what any of that shit means. All I know is that it's actually being written by some lesbo who doesn't even really like Star Wars that much, and has no respect for George Lucas. But this is just another example of what I mean when Disney never learns its lesson. They're going to try to forge ahead with this Acolyte series, even though many people have already canceled subscriptions to Disney+. Plus. And who the hell is even going to watch this crap anyway? Guy certainly ain't. No, no, no boys allowed. Nope. Only girls who love other girls. They're the only ones allowed in this. You guys... You can just basically piss off. We wanted real Star Wars, and you gave us female-centric junk. So she goes on about how the Phantom Menace had this profound effect on her identity as a lesbian woman. Lady, do you really think anybody gives a shit? If it seems like once again I'm going to be ripping into Kathleen Kennedy, that's only because, yeah, I suppose this video is a follow-up to the last one that I did. And yeah, once again, because we have Lesbo Hedlund in charge of this new female-centric Star Wars, we once again have Kathleen Kennedy to blame, and here's the genesis of that story. Let's not forget for one second that she started her career out as the pervert Harvey Firestein's personal delivery bitch. Don't ever forget that. So I guess one could say that Lesbo Hedlund was really Harvey Firestein's personal prank monkey, not really assistant. I mean, what did she do? Actually assist and escort uh, other women to the casting couch, as it were? Because that seems to be the bulk of her job back when she worked for the pervert. Of course, that wasn't all. There was also this rather disturbing audio that was collected from a few years ago uh, some podcast that Leslin, that Lezo Hedlund did, um, basically where it sounds like she's damning George with faint praise and then just damning him altogether. If you're so bold, let's take a listen. Like what we understand to be Star Wars, like the idea that like that only came from George Lucas, that that, o like, that only George Lucas. By the way, never trust anybody who says like every fourth word holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the, the prequels are an ex excellent example of that. I mean, the idea that like when you're hiring like. a director, that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's going to know to hire Ralph McQuarrie, that's the problem. That's the misogyny and the, and the, and the problem with the auteur myth. Misogyny? today because they're not thinking this is the person that will hire the right people and this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place they're just thinking do you know do you have all the answers and the truth is she clearly doesn't 
things that nobody does and anybody that says they do is lying. So what have we learned from that sound clip? Well, it came from a 2019 podcast and clearly it seems like she's damning Lucas with faint praise, but the truth is she is just displaying open contempt for George Lucas. Why? Because he's a man. Also, it used to be that Star Wars was practically a boys club, no girls allowed, unless of course you were a tomboy. But of course then that's the stereotype that all tomboys grow up to be lesbos like her. Not true. Not all, not all girls who were tomboys grow up to be lesbos like Lesbo Headland. So what the hell is this broad even talking about? And really, Hedlund, are you that stupid and delusional to think that Lucas was so delusional to think that he, that he could do all this himself? He knew he couldn't do this all himself. Hell, he knew that he wasn't a very good writer or director. That's why he had ghost writers and directors working for him. I think creatures like you have already given in to the asshole side of the force. Where does Disney keep finding these no-talent hacks? And why the hell do they even keep hiring them? But you heard it for yourselves, folks. This is the punk in the pantsuit who dissed George Lucas. Not very schmat. What this little carpet muncher did to George Lucas is unforgivable. And quite frankly, yes, Lucas is the creator. He gets to make the creative decisions. You don't, Lesbo Headland. You just don't have that power. And as for the Acolyte, <laughs> forget it. Nobody wants a prequel to a prequel. The prequels were bad enough on their own. Do we really want that? Of course Lucas knew he couldn't do all this on his own. That's why his friend Francis Ford Coppola was there to help him out uh, and set up American Zoetrobe. They did the first film together, which of course was THX 1138. Then, of course, Zoe Trobe folded once uh, THX 1138 didn't do very well, and then they worked together on American Graffiti. So, no, George knew right from the very beginning that he couldn't do all this stuff alone. He knew he wasn't a very talented writer and not a very skilled director. So, yeah, you don't think that he knew these things, Lezo Hedlin? Are you that gullible? All right, you got to hear me out on this one. She may be correct to some degree, but she's also incorrect in a lot of areas. Where she is correct is that, yes, no one man can create this. Of course, it takes a team of people. After all, that's why with Empire, he had uh, Irvin Kirshner direct the film and Howard Kasdan, I mean, sorry, uh, Lawrence Kasdan write the script. I was confusing him with Howard Kazandrian. But... Uh, I guess to a degree she is right, but <clears throat> she shouldn't really be dissing Lucas like that. I mean, it was his baby, and he created the whole universe. Kathleen Kennedy wanted to do things her way, and, well, her way was the wrong way. She totally screwed things up, as usual. You could have been more straightforward with George, but you weren't, Kathleen. Instead, you had to go and dismantle everything that he had worked so hard on and what he thought had real sci-fi value and do it your own way, which was totally destroy it. No, Kathleen, you were horribly misguided in your own belief that the Force was female when the truth was the Force is not a human being or any kind of living entity, but simply an energy field that is created by all living things, surrounding us, binding us, penetrating the galaxy together. Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. And boy, are you crude matter. You're like the new Darth Vader, leading the new stormtroopers. The only real difference with you, Kathleen, is there is no good in you. None whatsoever. If Indiana Jones 5 is a total bust, and mark my words, Kathleen, it will be, you will be out on your pompous, bloated keister. So once again, we're going to get another kind of Star Wars series that we did not ask for, a prequel to the prequels, uh, which, of course, now Lezo Hedlund doesn't even like anymore. Uh, which is weird because I thought they molded her and shaped her and made her realize, made her realize what kind of person she is. Yeah. 
We know what kind of person she is. A psycho bitch from hell! So, really, there's no reason this broad should even be involved in Star Wars at all. And there's no other reason she's even there, except because of Kathleen Kennedy's employ. <clears throat> I mean, we really, really hope that Indy 5 tanks so that Kathleen will be out of there. And that George may end up buying it all back from Disney. One can only hope. But I'm a skeptic, so I rather doubt that. Well, that's been my three cents worth on the whole thing. Why three cents worth? Hey, two cents just ain't enough. <clears throat> and, well, we have a situation here where we've got the feminazi propaganda machine at work uh, who refuses to listen to the fans and make things a lot worse than they already are because they don't understand at all that wokeness is weakness. And let's face it, the only kind of music they to listen to is that La La Teeny Bopper junk, so there's no real power to the music in the streets. <laughs>